Hi everyone, it's Matthew Griffin here, better known as a fanatical futurist. I'm going to be taking you through really sort of this week's and last week's news, basically on the future front, uh, just for a little bit of fun. So I hope you enjoy basically this uh, this little skit. Now, uh, one of the things basically that I saw recently is uh, CSSC, basically, which is a actually ironically basically a Chinese shipbuilding company, has now created a 70-story tall wind turbine. Now, when we actually have a look at this thing, basically the previous record basically was sort of 40 to 50 stories tall. I mean, this thing is ginormous. And in fact, basically one of the biggest worries that we now see basically with these giant wind turbines is what happens when the tips of these wind turbines go supersonic. Now, in this particular wind turbines case, basically it can, actually, can generate enough energy and enough power basically for 89,000 homes. I mean, this thing is literally a monster. Um, now, when we have a look at things like self-healing semiconductors, for example, you know, I've talked about these before. Um, ironically, basically, as they relate to interstellar space missions, because one of the biggest problems that we see with interstellar, interstellar space missions, easy for me to say, is that as the spaceships travel into deep space, radiation in deep space will inevitably fry their electronics you know so think about the voyager air you know, the voyager probe and that sort of stuff so when we actually have a look at self-healing semiconductors basically on the one hand they've got deep space implications but actually closer to home uh, this particular self-healing semiconductor is actually being used in solar panels to make solar panels more efficient but also so innate also to enable these solar panels to generate green hydrogen as well so sort of a, 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 a sci-fi like technology with deep space applications that's finding an application here on earth um, we've got valley that's it which is microsoft's uh, sort of uh, voice artificial intelligence that can clone your voice basically in three seconds so i might use that basically for some of these future uh, broadcasts um, however what's interesting about valley basically is valley is a zero shot learning artificial intelligence now, what I mean by that is it listens to three seconds of your voice, but then it can say things in your voice that it has never, ever heard you say. So that basically has a lot of implications, basically, for uh, the creative space, for voiceover artists, you know, and so on and so forth, but also cyber criminals who will use it for essentially biometric uh, voice spoofing. Um, this is a sort of another interesting one that I've seen, which, I mean, this is literally weird. I mean, I must admit, I can't quite get my head around, you know, one of these things. Anyway, on the one hand, using quant the principle of quantum mechanics, researchers have managed to teleport energy. So anyone that understands quantum mechanics will realize basically that uh, essentially you have two photons basically in the same state. So this is called superposition, um, where each photon basically is absolutely identical to the other one. Um, and, or quanta rather, uh, getting, getting the physics mixed up there. Uh, now in this particular case, Scientists have actually managed to teleport energy, i.e. electrical energy, from one place to the other. Now, we've seen this kind of thing happen, basically, with what we've sort of termed magnetic wormholes, basically, where we've actually been able to teleport uh, magnetic fields, which actually has implications, basically, for the MRI industry, because you'll be able to have an MRI... Uh, and rather than being stuck in a tube, basically like I was a couple of weeks ago uh, over in Andover, uh, you can actually walk around your room and the MRI basically can you know, do its thing basically while you're walking around. But also, you know, this particular set of research created negative energy. Now, I typically think of as, as children as uh, negative energy because they suck energy out of their parents. That's it. But I don't think that's really what uh, this particular research was about. Um, we've got Meta's artificial intelligence that has become an expert in diplomacy. So this is the game of diplomacy. Uh, it was in the top 10% of gamers. But as we quite see, as we see quite a lot, the other human gamers didn't know they were actually up against an artificial intelligence. Uh, we've seen cyber criminals using chat GPT to create new forms of malware, ransomware, but also girl bots. So if you are the kind of person that goes into different chat rooms, different games, basically, and likes having a chat with other people, then you might end up being chatted up by an artificial intelligence that has been created by a cyber criminal 
that is trying to hook you as a love interest to get money and all kinds of things from you. So that's a really odd one. Now, flipping that on its head, um, we actually saw a little while ago a number of people in the UK starting to use chatbots in a sort of similar way to chat up the cyber criminals and paedophiles. So what starts happening in the future when you have one chatbot chatting up another chatbot and they're both trying to actually catch each other? Uh, for different purposes, you know. So, I mean, that's just a really random, weird future. Um, we've got uh, ChatGPT again. So obviously I've been writing a little bit more about ChatGPT. Um, I just did a podcast on it as well. You'll see that come out in a couple of weeks. Um, so ChatGPT, not only has it been acing history exams, law exams, um, as well as sort of other you know, English exams like the UK GCSE exams, uh, where it got an A minus, by the way. Um, so that's good. Um, we've actually seen in the US, it almost aced the US MLE exam, which any doctors in the US basically will know this is one of the hardest medical exams that you can actually do. This is the exam that you need to do, as I understand it, before you become an actual doctor and you can poke people uh, legally. Um, we've got uh, quantum computers inventing new materials. Now, in this particular case, we had a quantum computer that invented a new cooling material which will reduce the amount of energy that buildings consume by about 30%. Now, it's a bit of a boring application, but the reason why I wrote about this is simply because quantum computers will, I mean, they're already really powerful, but quantum computers will increasingly be used in the development of new products. And as quantum artificial intelligence gets better, as we see generative artificial intelligence get better, yeah, inevitably, quantum computers will be used to create new drugs, new vaccines faster than ever before, and all kinds of different things. Um, now, we've also got Wi-Fi. So when we actually have a look at uh, privacy, for example, a lot of us think basically that a camera like this invades our privacy or an internet uh, connection like this one that I'm in front of basically invades our privacy, but no. Um, by embedding artificially intelligent firmware into your Wi-Fi router, I've talked about this many times over the past couple of years, we can turn your Wi-Fi router into a kind of sonar device. So as the Wi-Fi router sends our RF signals out, these AIs measure the travel time back just like a sonar and uh, sonar and these AIs are able to figure out at the millimeter, with a millimeter level of precision, you know, how you're walking, your emotions, where you are in the house, and so on and so forth. Now, on the one hand, that can be used for bad, but on the other hand, that means that we can use, it in this case, a Wi-Fi router to, de to detect if you are struggling to breathe. So now imagine these, basically, in an assess assistive care home setting, for example, you know, uh, we sense that an elderly person is struggling to breathe. We can make an intervention. We can get a doctor around there instantly, or we can get the family to actually call them and check on them and all that sort of stuff. Um, we've seen new water-based computer chips that could usher in the terahertz computing age because water-based logic gates are able to turn off using a laser that's focused on them at staggering speeds absolutely staggering speeds. Um, so water-based computer chips already here, uh, opens the door to terahertz computing. I'm going to have a little chat with Arm about that later. Um, that's a conversation you might hear about in a bit. Um, we're having a look at Europe. Europe's getting its new exascale supercomputer. Um, in addition to that, Europe's joining up a lot of different quantum computers and supercomputers basically to create what we call federated supercomputing as a service. So that's where we take lots of supercomputers, stick them together essentially in a federated cluster. And now basically they become much bigger brutes than they were before. Um, we've got from a cancer perspective, we have new breakthroughs that let, uh, let cancer surgeons actually see radiation. So that's visualizing the radiation that's being given to chemo patients so they can tell precisely where that radiation is hitting. 
to make sure that the patient who's undergoing chemotherapy actually gets treated properly. Um, and I'm not going to go through the rest of these, but these are sort of these last two are sort of fairly interesting. Um, we have a new photonic computer chip that has been able to transfer or transmit over 11 terabits of information per second. Now, to put that into context, this single photonic computer chip is able to transmit more information that goes over the entire global internet backbone in a second. So you think computers are quick today, you haven't seen anything yet. Um, and then when we have a look at uh, the latest USAF 2060 report, um, they think force fields are fairly close. Um, but while BAE, for example, have been able to use laser beams for a little while now, to focus on the Earth's upper atmosphere to create a Fermi lens effect, which is like a deflector shield effect to deflect incoming lasers. Um, the USAF uh, via AF works typically think basically that uh, future force fields will be made up of lots of drones uh, that uh, essentially form a a protective barrier around things basically so you know when i think of science fiction force fields typically we're thinking you know star wars basically and so on and so forth uh you know will smith in uh in in whatever independence day etc cetera, etc cetera. u.s air force is kind of thinking lots of drones um i think they might need to update their thinking on that one but hey ho uh, and that's it for for this week. Um, I've got lots of news basically on the website. If you want to go and have a look at it all, you can either go to 311institute.com, just go to the blog, uh, or you can go to fanaticalfuturist.com and you can sort of literally read basically what you're seeing on the screen here. Um, and there you go. Anyway, take it easy. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll speak to you soon. Ta-da, bye.